Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all how to be shady or how not to be shady. Or if you are shady, how to stop being shady AF. Uh, you know who I'm talking to. So if you're a window cleaner or just want to hang out for a bit, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's going on? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, it's a halfway decent episode. Normally, you're not getting yelled at like this or being accused, and I'm not accusing anybody, but go back and watch over 220, actually 230 episodes. All 30 minutes long. Come out every single Friday on everywhere podcasts are available. And, of course, YouTube if you like to do that kind of thing. Also, if you are one of the cool kids, that means you do all that. You've liked the video on YouTube. You've left a comment. You've left reviews even. But more importantly, you've bought your supplies through me. Shameless plug. Well, it is because of you that I get to wear some fantastically free shirts. So thank you so very much for everything you guys do. Genuinely, um, sometimes I forget to really, really just genuinely say thank you, and I am doing that right now. So thank you if you order from me. It doesn't cost you any extra. If you haven't, my number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. Jersey. 862-312-2026. Anyway, save that number. Now you have a guy, a supply guy. And yeah, we'll go from there. There's another step even above. Awesome. Cool kid. By the way, cool kid stickers all over. If you are an epic cool kid, and you've always wanted to be a cool kid, you wanted to join the ranks of awesomeness, and you wanted to be on a higher level, then get American Window Cleaner Magazine. Yeah, Because it's absolutely awesome. Now, mind you, if you like stickers and you want to sticker everything up, you want to have a bucket or a bucket on a belt or anything, even your trucks, trailers, whatever, you want it to be a little bit special and you want it to have awesome window cleaning stickers, well, every single issue comes with a sticker sheet. Every single month. So go to awcmag.com, get a subscription, because that would be absolutely amazing. And, by the way, uh, shameless plugs over. Uh, AWC, there's a killer promo going on right now that's the pre-Black Friday. So if you do go there and you're watching this show live or at least the same week, just check it out. Anyway, get a subscription. It's absolutely awesome. High five. Shameless plugs over. I have to put those out there. You know, I just have to help you guys uh, be awesome. And then also, uh, that's how I make my cheddar. So got to put it out there. But anyway, so today we are going to be talking about how not to be shady or what things can be done that are shady because maybe you're doing some of them. Now, mind you, I'm just some dummy who sits in a room with a microphone and a laptop and a a fancy light. Ooh, look at the light. You got to look good for the YouTube crowd. Not really. Um, But... (laughs) If you um, want to listen, you can. I'm not calling you shady. I'm not saying these things are shady in your opinion. I'm saying they're shady in my opinion. And we all know companies around that are super shady. I have companies that were in my area. uh, Some really, really good companies. Some awesome guys. uh, Some really just stand-up companies that were shady AF. They were super shady. They did things that were just like scummy. Like they gave everybody a, a, a kind of a, a bad taste in their mouth. We've all dealt with people like that. I've had people in, you know, my life now when I do uh, sales. You know, there's people on the other side that are super, super shady. But with all that being said, you don't have to be that guy or that girl. You don't have to be shady to be a business owner. You don't. Not at all, in fact. Here's the downside that kind of comes from having competition even that's a little bit craptastic. Here's the thing. We dealt with somebody in our area who was super shady. A couple companies, but a few come to mind. Who everybody, like one in three people, and I don't know these real statistics, just throwing out what I'm guessing, were like 
super unimpressed by them. We had people who had like no reviews and no Google page for the simple fact that they wouldn't be any positive reviews. I mean, why else would you not have that? So there's a lot to be said, but what does happen, unfortunately, is if somebody is shady in your area, you have to then work double hard. Double as hard? You have to work twice as hard to be not shady, right? So a lot of the things that you had to do was to compensate for the other window cleaners. And that's kind of sucky. That like changes your whole dynamic. It just, it ruins it for the industry in your area. But more importantly, now I have to work twice as hard because those other guys were being shady. So here's a few things that really, really get you to be shady. I'm telling you, this first one is my absolute kind of pet peeve in the industry. It's not as much in window cleaning. It is in like carpet cleaning, huge. But it's the bait and switch. Now, I know people who would put stuff out, and you've seen them. There's thousands of you listening right now. You've seen the ads where you're like, what? 3,000 square foot house inside and outside for like $79 window cleaned? Mm, Right? There's some kind of fine print. But those crappy cheap prices get people in their house. And then once they're there, they're like, oh, just so you know, you have double hung windows. Just so you know, you have casement crank out windows. It's going to be this much. It's like three times as much. We know people like that. They think that that cheap price gets them in the door. And then from there, their job is just to sell and get more every time. But they won't actually do the job for what they told them they would do the job for. Now, let me preface this by saying I'm a huge proponent of upselling. When we get to a job, we talked about the inside and outside. That price is set. But just so you know, we also do window clean or uh, gutter cleaning, pressure washing, blah, 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 blah. Are there any of those services that you need? That is different than saying, yeah, um, our special is $79, but technically it's a 3,000 square foot house, only if that house is underground and, um, you know, whatever, has an elevator. Some weird things that make it so that you have to go and do more. You see it in carpet cleaning, right? Three rooms cleaned for $75. Well, that's not really what it is. Doing the bait and switch makes people leery of everything. They make leery of leery of why you're there. They don't have a good feeling. Now they feel trapped. They've already scheduled you there and everything else. It just is crap business practice, right? What you can do, and I do this all the time, is sometimes prices do change. Sometimes prices have to change when you get to a job. I do all 99.999% of my bidding online, right? I don't go to people's houses to do the bidding. I can check and ask simple questions and know almost all the time what the price is. What I always say is, okay, awesome. So that is going to be your price. Uh, If we get to the job and something's weird or we forgot something or whatever, we're going to go ahead and just make sure we'll let you know before we start anything. But almost all the time, our prices are spot on. That kind of gives them a preface that they're going to check. When they get there, and I've had this happen, because we ask like questions about um, are the mullions in windows real cut-ups, you know, all that kind of thing. And I've had it before where people are like, no, they come out. And then you get there and they don't. And they're like, oh, they don't? I thought they did. Or double-hung windows end up having, you know, inside panes or panels or anything like that. But here's the thing. If I get to a job... And the price is like, whoa, these are real cut-ups. They didn't say they were real cut-ups. I'm going to just go up to them, our operations officer, crew chief, whoever. It's going to go up to them and be like, hey, just so you know, we went back and counted all the windows. Now, remember we they had talked on the phone about this. This is why they're this, blah, 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 blah. But we've already talked about a price of $299. Now, we can do all these windows here for $299. We can do a total of 12 windows or whatever ends up being because of the casements. You could pick those ones and stay at that price. We don't want to have to charge you more, but if you do want the whole job done because it's going to take us twice as long, we do have to charge more. But 
I don't want to waste the time that we came here or everything we talked about. So um, if you want to stick to that price, just pick out X amount of windows and we can certainly do that, right? I want to give them an option so I'm not forcing them into something else. I'm giving them an option to still do everything we talked about on the phone as far as price. They're not wasting the, the thing. They're not pinched. They're not in the area. And I'm also explaining why things have changed. Now, generally, if uh, we get there and they're like, oh, man, we're off by like 20 bucks, I just do the job. Usually people aren't really out there to scam you, but sometimes you could feel that they are. It's your call. But this happens maybe once a year, maybe twice a year, where pricing is really wrong. If you're asking the right questions, you can really figure it out. But don't do the bait and switch. Don't go out there and charge more, uh, or I should say charge less just to get in the door. Don't be a bait and switcher. Tell them an upfront price. Remember, if you add value or show them why they're paying that, it's not price that they're on. A lot of times people get scared, like, I can't charge that. I can't charge. I was just talking to people yesterday. Can't do that in my area. Can't try. Have you tried? Well, no, it's too much. That's what you think. But there's people around you doing that. I guarantee it. It's not price. It's value. So don't focus on that. Another one that I really, really hate. Really hate. And you see this sometimes, but this is just... This is an unconfident business owner who is uh, trashy, super trashy. And it's called chase stealing. Chase stealing customers is when somebody is watching people working on Main Street. Oh, they just did that place. All right. And they're done. They're leaving. They're going to the next place. You pull up and then pick apart everything that they did. Oh, I know you have fish just in here, but... Look at how they did the windows. It's terrible. I can clean that for you now for free. Like chase stealing is is stupid. All you're doing is trying to steal from those people. Now, if they're doing a bad job, hear me out. If they're doing a bad job, we've all gotten tons of work from, say, a fish person who's just like trying to get out of there as fast as possible. They do crap work. Somebody calls you and the person says, hey, I've had this window cleaner for a while, but man, every time they leave, their trips and smears and streaks and everything else, I need a new window cleaner. If you just go and are selling and you take stuff from it, more than likely, you're going to be taking stuff from people. You're going to be taking customers because in the route world, everybody either doesn't do it or does it themselves or has somebody do it. It's just bound to happen. Adding value, increasing, you know, either the frequency, reliability, the uh, comfort level, the uh, quality, all that does take customers that's unintentional. When you purposely try to take something from somebody, that's shady. I feel like that's just above and beyond like what you need to do, right? I'm a huge proponent of building up your pillar, right? We're all standing on pillars. We talk about this. It's corny. I get it. We're all on pillars. If somebody else's pillar is way up here, there's two ways to be at their level. It's to chop theirs down or to build yours up. It's harder to build yours up, but that's what you need to do. Build yours up. Don't tear other people down. So don't be a chase dealer. It just isn't worth it. I had a guy one time and uh, it was like the sales guy of a company that wasn't even in our city. And I saw him out there. I knew what he was doing because I saw him, you know, we did like a whole downtown area. We did like 12 or 15 jobs on this one like street. So I could see the guy just sitting there in his truck. Um, I saw the writing. He was up back far enough to think that you couldn't see it, but I could see it. And he would just go in these jobs. Um, as soon as I left the first job, um, uh, well, mind you, the, the route guy left the job, I got a call at the office to come down and that's how basically I found the guy or saw him. But, uh, the first customer called me and, uh, my route guy didn't notice it. And she said, uh, Hey, just so you know, there's a guy here that as soon as you guys left came in and sold, I'm like, that's kind of weird. So I go down, it was like literally two minutes from my shop uh, where, where I was, and I saw the company. And it wasn't the company's fault, it was this guy's fault. But his whole idea, because I asked him, I'm like, hey, you're just going to go in all the jobs we're doing? 
And his confident response was, yeah, you know, you guys have mistakes or they're not happy with the service they just got. We're going to be there to scoop them up. And I was like, man, I had such loyal customers that out of those like three, I had a lady send an email and two other people call. They're loyal customers. They're like, yeah, this is super shady. This guy comes in right as soon as you walk out. And he's like, yeah, I just saw you guys. Uh, I just saw the window cleaners leave and I wanted to check their quality. I'm like, ugh. Anyway. So, um, yeah, I knew the owner of that other company um, as kind of a thing. Just let him know, like, dude, this is what the guy is doing, man. I'm getting calls left and right. And uh, never saw him do that again. So I don't know if he was still there or what, but... Stuff like that, like if you are intentionally trying to just like screw over the other guy, it's gross. It's shady. It's not you. Don't do that. Another thing that I think is super shady, we're talking now um, on the house side of things, is not having insurance. Now, I know, I know that some of you are new in getting into it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people who don't have insurance because they're purposely trying to like make a couple extra bucks. Well, I'm not paying that. The, like, if you've been in business for a long time, don't have insurance, I don't get it. I don't get why you're not wanting to be a legitimate company. If you think insurance is a scam, I get that. But has a ladder ever dropped or slid off of a gutter and landed on a car? You could total out a car, right? Not having insurance just to save the money is like super scummy. Sorry if that's what you do. This is my opinion. You can do things how you want. But if you're doing that, you're you're not covering yourself, it's a little bit shady. By the way, if you can't afford or you don't think that it's uh, good uh, to have insurance or to have, you know, apparel or to have anything that makes you a legitimate company and you're still rocking just garbage equipment and everything else and you're trying to save money, you've been doing this for years and you're somehow, you know, I'm making more money by doing this. Your prices are not high enough. A one-man show can make easily $100,000, $130,000, $150,000 a year. Can, absolutely. That's enough to, like, have the things you need to be a company you know what i'm saying so make sure to go ahead get the insurance just be legit if you're getting it not having insurance because you're new i'm not hounding you like i get that too get insurance still as soon as you can but the people who are trying to like save a dollar by not that's not that's not like a real company you know like doing things how you're supposed to do things is kind of what sets you apart from the bucket bobs that's what we're trying to do Why would somebody choose you? Well, if your answer is, well, I don't have insurance, that's why, because I save money and I make an extra buck, that's not a reason anybody wants to buy from you. Another one that drives me bonkers, bonkers, is um, we'll say photoshopped pictures, fake pictures. A, don't steal pictures from somebody else. Somebody else worked super hard to get the stuff, take the picture, put them up on their site, and you just take them. The other thing is that pictures index. If there's new pictures on sites, they will index that there's action on the site. It will also index the search for that picture. That's why you want nice, good pictures on your site. If you take that, you're killing their mojo for the picture even if you're in another area like hey i don't want to like steal work from them but they got really good pictures you take them now you're screwing up their business in new mexico when you're in illinois not cool don't do that take your own pictures everything you do take some pictures before and after pictures be in the exact same position boom if you're gonna photoshop pictures you're only photoshopping your pictures to match contrasts and light let me let me explain if you take a before and after picture of uh, some concrete you did, and the grass in the picture, and one is really bright and the other one's not, that means that the sun, or your lighting in the picture, was different between the two pictures. You want it to match. So what you're trying to do is not whiten the concrete. 
these fake pictures, we've all, we've all seen them, where people are just like, whiten everything up, and it's it's like a joke. A, you're lying, right? You can't advertise falsely in food or anything else. That's why uh, anything that's on the box of a cereal says, you know, pictures are larger to enlarge texture or whatever. But the big thing is, is that if you're lying in the pictures, you could be lying about everything else. Your quality, your work, your standards, right? But all you're trying to do is increase the lighting of the picture, the contrast, so that the grasses, if there's grasses or whatever, that's not the part you cleaned, match the same color. You want that picture to be the same exact spot each time too. That's the only doctoring you can really do in, in a picture. Because anything else is like cheesy. Understand that when I do pressure washing, or a lot of you may do this, I will explain to people that pressure washing is not a ma magic wand. I can make things look awesome, but it is not going to look brand new. And I want people to understand that. Because when we get there, I don't want people's um, expectations to not be met expectations not being met are why people do negative reviews. So don't take fake pictures. Don't steal pictures. It's not worth it. I do uh, coaching, um, private coaching for, uh, for some people. And um, one of the big things that I always, always say uh, is that Especially we do some startup stuff. Some of the companies are startups. Some of them have been around for a long time. But the big thing is, is that every job is done. They take a picture. A picture. A picture of something. So that means in a, in a normal day. Now if you're new, you want even more than this. Take a few. But in a normal day, you do four houses. We'll say your crew does. That's four new pictures. Exterior only. Of the guys working. Every single picture. At the end of the day, they just shoot them to you. Right? That should be part of their repertoire. Because here's the thing. Sites index good in pictures. Advertising is good in pictures. New pictures. Better pictures. You're always refreshing that. If you're new, go out there and clean your concrete. Go out there and, you know, clean your windows. Take some pictures. If you're new, you're starting the site, you haven't done a ton of work, you don't even have your logoed shirts yet, take some closer up pictures of like your hand doing the work or some cool kind of uh, uh, pictures, something artsy, something cool for the site. Don't steal pictures. There's no reason that you have to take pictures that somebody else worked for. There just isn't a, isn't a need for that. But it all really, really comes down to just doing everything you can to make your customer comfortable. And this is one of those things that someone buys when they're comfortable with you, the transaction, the job, and the value. Really comes down to comfort. Because if you're not, if this just doesn't feel right, you're not buying. Right? If the price is just, you know, man, I thought it would be... 200 bucks, but this guy's trying to charge me $40,000. You didn't sell them on the value. If they go, oh, I see, I see why this is more. Ah, they're comfortable with the price because of the value. The whole thing on this whole bit of, of being shady, being the company that you would want to buy from, is making people feel comfortable. Like I said in the beginning, if you have shady companies, what you have to do is actually go above and beyond. Now, with that, for me, is guarantees Guarantees put people at ease. Now, I have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Everybody technically does, right? If you get done, they're like, oh, man, there's a big spot here. No company anywhere would be like, well, sounds like a you problem. <laughs> I would think nobody would do that. If somebody would do that, uh, definitely comment down below. But either way, uh, most people wouldn't do that. Right, So you have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, but saying it out loud helps them feel comfortable. I always say we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. We will not leave your property until you're happy. Because I walk with people, I ask them, hey, do you have a chance to look? Everything looks great. Oh, good, perfect. If somebody later calls the next day and they're like, hey, 
this spot or streak or smear or whatever is there. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. We'll be out tomorrow at blah, blah, blah. I'm going to take care of it. You are too. Let them know. A seven-day rain guarantee. Yes, seven-day rain guarantee. If you don't know about that, I've done that for ever. I mean, literally probably one year without it. So, I mean, we've had it forever. 15 years, probably. And in that time, I've had one lady call me. And I showed up to her property. And I did it myself. I went there myself because I figured, what the heck, I just touched up whatever windows. And the guarantee is that within seven days of the rain dirties your windows, give me a call. We'll come back and make that window, those windows, whatever, look beautiful. She called me back up and I said, hey, I'm just uh, here to touch up the window that the rain dirtied, which, again, rain doesn't really dirty windows. By the way, big like talk now about that the rain is not pure. It doesn't have to be pure. It just doesn't have to be hard with chemicals. Even if you have a ton of dirt, you have the dirt on the windows. So if it rains within seven days, there's not enough dirt that is accumulated on the windows to really get that. If you have dust storms or something, that's different. But this is why. Even if you have that, it's not going to be. It's like car washes have guarantees also. If it rains within three days, you get to go back. Nobody ever goes back. Probably some people do, but not a lot. Anyway, what the, the guarantee does is it puts people at ease. You think it's going to rain? Uh, it might rain. Maybe I should cancel. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Don't worry. Be comforted by knowing we have a seven-day rain guarantee. Oh, good. Okay. Right? 100% satisfaction guarantee. Uh, seven-day rain guarantee. And fully insured. Again, go back to the insurance thing. Most of us are insured. Okay, it's not that impressive. It is impressive when you want to make sure somebody knows you're above and beyond. You're a professional company. I put it out there. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee, a seven-day rain guarantee, and we carry a $2 million aggregate policy. $2 million policy. I'll put it out there. People are like, oh, man. If you do that, then someone's going to sue you because they know they can get $2 million. No, that doesn't, that's not. Could it happen? Sure, maybe. Insurance companies are really good at not paying for frivolous crap. That's why they exist. That's why you have insurance companies. Put it out there. Make people feel comfortable. I also say we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. I hate the Better Business Bureau, but I put it out there. We also have, you know, 135-star reviews on Google. We have 500 reviews. 500 five-star reviews on Google. WCR, by the way, has like a thousand five-star reviews. Crazy. You're telling me that if 500 people, 100 people, however many, by the way, get as many reviews as you can, but however many people you have, you're telling me that they don't have weight or clout? They sure do. If you're trying to make somebody feel comfortable and you're like, hey, 500 people in this town have used me, liked me so much, they left me five-star reviews. Read them. Go over them. We all know we have 500 people a year that like us. But it's 500 people that took the time out of their day to write a review. That's big. That's clout. That's like social justification. Social... It's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway. It's there. That's the big thing. Making people feel comfortable. Making people know that you're not shady. Let them know. Be transparent. The biggest thing to make anybody feel leery about anybody you've ever met is if you find something out that you're like, hmm, right? You go to a car dealership. Looking at a car, whole thing, you sit down to do the financing, and the guy's like, oh yeah, and just so you know, uh, that one actually doesn't have an engine. And you're like, you didn't say that. Now, everything they said comes into question. If you have a really good friend, and all of a sudden you find out that they like stole a bunch of money from somebody, you're like, hmm, right? What happens when you have uh, a really good couple that you're friends with, you know? And all of a sudden, the, the one spouse cheats on the other one and they get divorced. You're like, hmm. I always knew something was up with it, right? As soon as you find out someone is shady, it questions everything. Be transparent. 
Be transparent. Tell people everything. Even if you think it's not a good thing, if you break something, instantly tell them. Let them know how it's happened, you know, how it happened. You apologize. You're going to replace it. All that fun stuff. Because if you don't and they find out you broke something, now everything's in question. We've had that before. You've had that before. Make people feel comfortable. Don't be shady. Don't let people think that you're shady. That's about all this is. By the way, if you haven't yet, I want to be a rep. Really, I say this in every single episode. I know you're tired of hearing it. Wait, before you jump off the podcast, take my number, 862-312-2026. Let me put every single order in for you. Shoot me a text even. Be like, yo, Jersey, everything's in my cart. I'll put it through. It costs you nothing extra. And it's like an awesome virtual high five of awesomeness. A double virtual high five of awesomeness. It's like an extra is getting the American Window Cleaner magazine. AWC magazine is the longest running window cleaning magazine in the world since 1986. Lots of changes have happened, especially since I took the magazine over. We now have a monthly magazine, sticker sheets, and uh, everything inside, absolutely ridiculous. Awesome, super cool. You're a window cleaner, immerse yourself in it. Get the subscription, it's like $69 for a whole year. You spend more money on your fancy lattes. Go to awcmag.com. Get the subscription, please. Tell me you got the subscription, man. That would be absolutely rad. Either way, my number again, 862-312-2026. Let me know if you need anything. But until next week, go out there. Don't be shady, but be awesome.